My name is Sam Vanyan. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Narcissistic supply, admiration, adulation, and in general, attention, is exciting. When narcissistic supply is available, the narcissist feels elated, omnipotent, omniscient, handsome, sexy, adventurous, invisible, and irresistible. When, on the other hand, narcissistic supply is missing or deficient, the narcissist first enters a manic phase of trying to replenish his supply. If he fails, the narcissist shrivels, is deflated, withdraws, and is reduced to a zombie-like state of numbness. Some people, and all narcissists, are addicted to excitement, to the adrenaline rush, to the danger that inevitably and invariably accompanies reckless behaviors. They are the adrenaline junkies. All narcissists are adrenaline junkies, but not all adrenaline junkies are narcissists. Narcissistic supply is the narcissist's particular sort of thrill, his drug of choice. Deficient narcissistic supply is the same as absence of excitement and thrills in non-narcissistic adrenaline junkies. Originally in early childhood, narcissistic supply was meant to help the narcissist regulate his volatile sense of self-worth and self-esteem. But narcissistic supply, regardless of its psychodynamic functions, also simply feels good. The narcissist grows addicted to the gratifying effects of narcissistic supply. He reacts with anxiety when constant reliable provision is absent or threatened. Narcissistic supply is pleasurable. Thus, narcissistic supply always comes with excitement on the one hand and with, an anxi with anxiety on the other hand. Excitement, because it's pleasurable. Anxiety, lest it be withdrawn. The narcissist is afraid that he won't be able to secure narcissistic supply in the future and he is therefore constantly anxious. When unable to secure normal narcissistic supply, adulation, recognition, fame, celebrity, notoriety, infamy, affirmation, or mere attention, the narcissist resorts to abnormal narcissistic supply. He tries to obtain his drug, the thrills, the good feeling that comes with narcissistic supply, by behaving recklessly, by succumbing to sub substance abuse, or by living dangerously. Some narcissists, such narcissists, faced with a chronic state of deficient narcissistic supply, become criminals, or race car drivers, or gamblers, or soldiers, or investigative journalists, or police officers. They defy authority. They avoid safety, routine, and boredom. No safe sex, no financial prudence, no stable marriage or career. They become peripatetic. They change jobs, or lovers, or vocations, or avocations, or residences, or friendships, anything to generate excitement in their lives. But sometimes even these extreme and demonstrative steps are not enough. When confronted with a boring, routine existence, with a chronic and permanent inability to secure narcissistic supply, and with a pronounced lack of excitement, these narcissists compensate by inventing thrills where there are none. So they become paranoid full of delusional persecutory notions and ideas of reference and conspiracies. Or they develop phobias, fear of flying, fear of heights, fear of enclosed or open spaces of cats or spiders. Fear is a good substitute to the excitement they so crave and that constantly eludes them. Anxiety leads to the frenetic search for narcissistic supply. Obtaining the supply causes a general, albeit transient, sense of well-being relief and release, as the anxiety is abated and alleviated. This cycle is addictive. Anxiety, heightened anxiety, manic search for narcissistic supply, finding narcissistic supply, reduced anxiety, anxiety, relief, sense of well-being. But what generates anxiety in the first place? Are people born adrenaline junkies or do they become ones? No one knows for sure. It may be genetically determined. We may discover one day that adrenaline junkies, conditioned by defective genes, develop special neural and biochemical paths 
an unusual sensitivity to adrenaline. Or it may indeed be the sad outcome of abuse and trauma during the formative years, as is the current thinking. The brain is plastic, and easily influenced by recurrent bouts of capricious and malicious treatment. Bearing this in mind, we can also say that the prognosis for this particular behavior in narcissism, reckless behavior, adrenaline-seeking, thrill-seeking, prognosis is pretty good. Since the brain is plastic, these processes are reversible.